There are no instructions for this one on page 95 in the International Edition, but I've always wanted to try it. So let's play with it. It's symmetrical, so I can trace it all on one page. And I know I have to start out by combining the two darts. So I haven't practiced this. You're going to get the whole thought process. I know. Normal people practice them. But sometimes I think I explain things better when I haven't practiced it because you're experiencing the thought process. Okay, there's the back. Is that I want to leave this out where I can see it. So I want a dart that kind of comes in right there. So I can make that as high as I want to. It kind of concerns me that, I mean, we've got a seam line here and they're trying to get away with not having a seam come all the way up right there. And that's going to be weird. We are going to have to at least slash to here, whether we end up using that or not. Sometimes illustrators do things that aren't physically possible without realizing it. They just So this bottom section is going to become all one piece and then this is going to close into there. So I'm just going to blend those two together. This little piece, because there isn't a dart there, we're going to take this. Can you see that? I need to start doing things in color. I'm just going to take that and attach it so that the dart is closed. This time I'm going to connect it at the bottom though. And when this piece, when I'm through, I'll redraw that so I blend it between the two spaces. And then this one, when I cut this, I'm going to cut it up to the bottom of the dart end. So I'm using this like the bus point. I'm not cutting across that, but I'm going to come in from the top side. Okay, so 
now I can close this. Just like we do on the front. It's just fun. So this section is this color going to show up better? And my ruler has disappeared. It's under here somewhere. There it is. This time I need to go from corner to corner because there's not extra ease in there. I need to make sure that that's straight. So that line is straight. The rest of these are going to be normal. This has extra ease in it. And I am happy to just accept that. So this is going to need seam allowance down here. This is going to blend across here. Those two are going to sew together. And we can just pretend that that works because it'll be cute. It'll have a little bit of extra, but I think that will be fine. You have to be careful about those things because if you get that releasing in the wrong place in front, it looks like you have an extra bust point somewhere that it doesn't belong. But I like the way that's working out. I didn't want to put a seam there. There are a couple of the ones in the book that near this page, in fact, that you have to mess with a little bit because they don't quite work. Okay, so right here I'm putting, this will put a little bit of extra darting right there. And we want our gathers all in by the time it gets to there, but then we can continue the seam up to there. So if I blend this, oh, oh, there it is. There's the physically impossible part. If I you can't add seam allowance on this seam and have the gathers end up in there. So it all goes well until you get to the seam allowance. So if I blend just that part right there, that will be just barely sewable. You'll have to cut that. You know, there would have to at least be a slit there so that the gathers can slide up into that. It's not gathered a lot, so in order for it to be like the picture, well, I guess it is. You'll only have about a sixteenth of an inch of seam allowance along here. And if you're home sewing it, you could probably make that work. But if you were doing this in a factory, you would have to actually separate it right there on that line so that you get a fourth of an inch of seam allowance on both sides. It 
end you would get a little bit of extra bubble put in right there, but it would probably disappear in the gathers. But I would be suspicious of that one and make sure that I sewed it out of fabric that I really didn't care about the first time. Because it will take a little bit of playing with. If we just didn't have to have seam allowance. created a bubble. We can't have that. Alright, there's our piece. I will color in the part that has been added. That little dart at the top in the shoulder added all of this extra space. And that's why you can't typically combine them. because you'd have a lot of extra. Okay, so this is my center back at the bottom. This is my center back at the top. This is the fold line when we make it look like that picture. I'll cut it out in a minute. It'll be easier to see, but I'm marking this as center back fold. The lower section has to have a seam allowance because it can't be on the fold. And this section is going to be sewn into the other section. But, hmm. So this part could be seam allowance, but then we're getting into no seam allowance and you want it to kind of go down the middle. So this is the seam allowance that I'm blending into, half on each side. I'll zoom in. So as I'm adding the seam allowance to this section right here, this is where we've got only a sixteenth of an inch down to nothing. So I have to cut a slit up to here and then just barely sew that part together. So this fourth of an inch seam that I'm starting out with has to blend in to this little part way through. So my seam allowance can't be even. And this is that's why this is a sew at home only. And if you want to really understand that, it will make more sense if you sew it. Okay. So I'm going to cut that part. This is the center back seam for the waistline area. This is the edge of the seam allowance. And 
I connected that. But I'm going to put glue and This is my slit where there's just almost nothing. And you can see that little tiny bit of yellow on either side. That's all the seam allowance I have for this part. And then this needs to fit into there. So I'm bringing that together so I can kind of see a little bit better. Well, that might help us because as this comes over, that is going to join right there. So I can actually blend from here to here. So that might give us more seam allowance than I was expecting. Yeah, that helped a lot. So, this is going to blend over to here. I want to sew this one together. I want to make a coat with this in the back. So this, oh, but then we're blending back into that tiny bit because, hmm, because this is seam allowance again. And that's going to have to blend into no seam allowance. So basically what I did was I connected this to... I'm good at that. I need to blend this line into that one. I blended my seam allowance line into my stitching line. See how it would be better if I practiced these things? But you need to see the thought process. Okay, so this is my stitching line. Coming over into there. Yeah, that works. I had to cut it apart in order to play with it. But because I cut it apart, I have to put it back together and then we'll see how much more seam allowance we can get back. And that's, that's just ugly. I don't want to put tape over that because if I put tape over it, it will be there forever. This is what it's like at work. This is, this is real. This is the center back and the waist and the armhole, the shoulder, and the extra. 
so I still need to blend, but I've got a little bit more to work with. That's where my seam allowance is even, and then from here to the point, it has to blend. So from here to here, I'm hoping that line is going to be centered. Close. So if I cut it like that, then there will be a little slash line, and you'll sew to here. And there will be just barely enough for it to sew together. I would still put fray check on it before I started sewing. And I might put some on it again after. So this is both sides of your seam allowance. Grab that glued. And the center back seam allowance. And the waist, I'll zoom out now. This one can be extra credit. I know how you all like extra credit. Because extra credit means it's optional, but you'll all want to do it because you'll all want extra points. But if you're stressed out and life is happening all around you and you don't get time, then you won't have to be upset. All right, you're probably going to have to go back and rewatch, but I will do a recap so that maybe you'll understand better before you go back and rewatch. This is the pattern piece for this. It's the one on page 95 in the international edition. This is going to be cut on the fold because there's no seam there. But this has a seam allowance like that because you have to get in there. So when you sew this together, you're going to put a basting stitch along here. This is going to be gather. You'll put a basting stitch up to here and along here and you'll gather that so it's the same length. But when you sew it, you flip it over and stitch it along like that. But it will be that much longer. So you'll gather it down so that it matches. And it will sew together like that. And there will be gathers in there but you'll only have a tiny bit of seam allowance right there. 
So you're going to stitch it possibly to here, but you're only going to slash. You're only going to have a slash line to there. And you'll have regular seam allowance for the first part. But your gathers will probably have to end back here because you won't be able to get much up into that top part. So. Decorative one on page 95 in the International Edition. Extra credit.